When Phil did the review of the 7800 XT and XTX, a lot of you were like, what the heck? Why didn't you talk about overclocking? Well, that's something that Phil left to me because it's kind of in my wheelhouse. And I'll be honest, I have hated overclocking AMD GPUs ever since the RDNA technology was released. And spoiler alert, that persists to this day. Today, I'm gonna to show you some of the challenges of overclocking AMD graphics cards, especially with this new architecture. And I'm gonna tell you why overclocking or at least overclocking potential should never be a reason to even consider an AMD graphics card. NZXC Canvas monitors feature more of what gamers want. The Canvas 1440p QHD offers 165 hertz refresh rate for the perfect balance between performance and resolution, while the 1080p Full HD Canvas delivers 240 hertz for a competitive edge. Both versions feature AMD FreeSync Premium, one millisecond response time, and OSD settings via cam, allowing for specific settings between games. To see the complete list of canvas monitors and monitor mounts from NZXT, follow the link in the description below. So what I have in my hand right here, this is the Power Color Red Devil, um, the one that Phil took a look at, has that crazy backplate uh, add-ons that you can do. I agree with Phil, it looks great with just the regular backplate. Um, but I, I like seeing them come out with new things to do. Anyway, this is a card built for overclocking, but it's one of those things where it's also an unreleased card and it's still quote unquote a prototype. Um, but we might throw this on here and play around with it a little bit. I've already spent a couple of hours today playing with this card and the results and the behavior that I'm seeing is basically exactly the same as the reference card, which is what's currently installed in the system right now for the XTX. Um, it's just the clocks are a little bit higher with this card. Um, but anyway, so we'll just start right now with the out of the box experience with the AMD graphics card. Overclocking AMD graphics cards is such a different experience in NVIDIA cards. Um, my NVIDIA fanboyism is gonna show right now a little bit. Overclocking NVIDIA graphics cards is a million times easier, a million times more straightforward, and actually shows real tangible, like very tangible improvements in um, clocking up your graphics card. So when the 5700 XT came out and the 5700 non-XT, the RDNA generation or gen one graphics, we could see, we could, we could push the clocks pretty far, but we saw very little changes in FPS. We saw very little improvement, which is weird because typically if you can get a 10% overclock out of your GPU in an NVIDIA graphics card, you would see damn near a 10% improvement in performance. It was very linear. It was very linked in a linear type of equation. AMD is not that way. It's never been that way and it's not that way again. If I was hoping with the new chiplet design and maybe we would see it, Anyway, we'll show you right now. So you have to use the Adrenaline software. Default, which is the out of the box settings. You've got undervolt GPU. This is all about temperatures and power draw. You've got overclock GPU, which is just gonna automatically kind of do a scan. I'm not sure exactly what it's scanning. It does it very quickly. Uh, in fact, we'll do it right now in real time. Look, overclock GPU. Auto overclocking GPU is an invasive process. It may cause your system to crash and reboot. Uh, your current Tuning configuration will be lost. It's recommending you save, blah, blah, blah. Could take several minutes to complete. Proceed. Okay, well, it doesn't take several minutes. It takes several seconds. And then it's gonna give you a number that it's a new target for the card. So our new target for this card right now, 3,218 megahertz. Spoiler alert, it is never gonna hit 3,218 megahertz. That is just a target. Then you have overclock RAM, which is just that, you overclock the RAM. Now there are auto overclocking functions built into the utilities that you can use the NVIDIA graphics cards. Like EVGA's Precision X1, you've got the Curve Optimizer, MSI Afterburner, you also have the Curve Optimizer, which will basically optimize voltage and uh, frequency at every bin or boost bin, which goes through and tests stability on all of them, which is great. This just kind of throws out a blanket, here you go. If you do auto overclock, of graph of GPU, you cannot also run an auto overclock of the VRAM, which to me is, a, is, is, is bad. You should be able to do those together. I don't know why it, they're independent of each other. So I don't understand why one has to be separate from the other. That's one of my major complaints that I've always had regarding the adrenaline software. If you go to GPU tuning and go to advanced, first of all, I, this is stupid. Default, it shows you a percentage. It shows you a percentage of a number you can't see. So you're guessing as to what the additional percentage is gonna be. For instance, max frequency, 100%. Cool, 100% of what? So you're guessing, you're like, oh, okay, 105% of imaginary unicorn number. So that's stupid because if you just click advanced control, all that does is put a frequency number to it. So that is AMD stupidity number two, right? When it comes to not being able to do auto overclock of GPU and auto overclock of RAM together, you have to click another button just to see the frequency and that apparently that's advanced. So whatever, I, I know I sound like I'm ranting here, but 
If you guys wanted this video and you're getting you're getting my two cents on it, and, or actually I'm giving you all a quarter. I'm gonna go ahead and just use Heaven Benchmark as an example. If I go to Overclock GPU, we can actually do this while it's running. The game's gonna stutter like mad because the GPU is now being utilized. There, there's a 3218 again, 2954, 2943. But you know what else is stupid about the AMD overclocking utility? The fan cannot be tuned independently from the, the auto overclock. Why not? If I wanna set my fan speed to 100%, independent of where the clock is going, let me do it. Now, check this out. 3100, probably gonna crash. So now it's actually doing it. Now we're gonna hit a power limit here very quickly because it can't go higher than 397 watts. That's where it's maxed out. If I go now to 3200, it's gonna crash, I know it. It's only doing this because the camera's running. I spent two and a half hours this morning screwing around with this and I could not get it to hit 3200 even once. Anyway, I wanna see where this is gonna max out. So let's go 3250. 3275? Oh, do you see all that stuttering right there? I don't know if you could see that on camera. The problem is on camera, it's being normalized to 30 FPS. There's a massive amount of stuttering happening right now. And this is now where you start to experience this weird degradation in performance as the clock goes up. Even though the utility is showing 100% util and the frequency is there, it's at 3282 right now, but the performance drops significantly as the clock speed goes up. So let's go 3300. Uh, clock speed normal? Oh no, you're right. I just realized this, okay. yeah. So Phil has this theory right now that we lost clock speed in the RAM because the GPU is prioritizing the voltage it needs and the, and the power that it needs. So it ta it's taken away from the VRAM. Now the VRAM right now is 1.1 gigahertz slower than where it is by default. I'm wondering if it's deciding to pull voltage from the memory to keep the GPU stable just to avoid crashing. Now that's obviously a trade-off. It's nice to have it stabilize itself this way, but in gaming, you could if I go up to 3,500 megahertz, but I have to drop my RAM down to half its speed, that is not a trade-off worth having. In fact, most game titles we found, especially with NVIDIA cards, really benefit from faster G, uh, GDDR than faster core speeds. Most of the uh, like crazy overclocking we did in the past with LN2, I got my, my max scores by optimizing RAM speed over GPU speed. Now, as soon as I hit apply, if our theory is correct, as soon as I hit apply to make the minimum 3040, we should see the VRAM clock speed drop. There it is. We just lost 300, there, yeah, look at that. So now if I go ahead and put this up even higher, let's say 3200, boom. That is not a good trade-off. Unless the entire reason AMD has it set this way is for stability. There's nothing in here that tells you overclocking the GPU may reduce your VRAM frequency. Now this might have always existed. This might have existed in 6000 series. It might have been talked to to death, but I don't, I don't. This is the highest we've ever seen clock speeds go. I always hit GPU stability long before I would hit, like it would crash long before the RAM would ever drop. I think this is newer. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is not, this is not a good trade-off. Well, how far can I go with this then now? 3,400. That's gonna drop down below a thousand watch. No. Nope, but look at that, 3395. The clock speed's impressive. You can't get anywhere near that with an NVIDIA card, but here's the thing, it's not translating to performance because we're just stealing it from somewhere else on the board. All right, let's do this real quick. Now that I've showed you how the utility works, and this is why we, get, we do separate videos for this, otherwise the review would have been like an hour long, which some of you might have enjoyed, but you know, now at least it's in a, in a package where people can just be like, I want the overclocking information, let's just go with that. And here's the funny thing though, that, that, that performance trade-off happens at a much lower frequency when the RT accelerators are involved. Let's set that to 33. Let's set this to just like 27. Look at the frequency there. Look at the VRAM there. So we're losing VRAM clock at a lower frequency when RT is involved. Now watch this. If I just go ahead and push this up higher to like 3000. Look at that, clock speed down. I didn't even notice this before, and this, this has never been something I've had to look at in the past. 
and the FPS is tanking. It is like all over the place. And that's because the FPS goes down as this clock goes down. And as the load lifts kind of between scenes, it goes up to 2485 and then back down. Now I think, again, this is this just makes sense. This is a power limit thing because in heaven, it's not using the RT accelerators, so there's not as much power draw happening. Now that the RT accelerators are fired up, the core needs even more power, which is why at a lower frequency, it's starting to pull from the RAM. This is the press driver. I wanna point this out. So what I wanna do now that I've kind of showed you here how the AMD overclocking works, I wanna see if that behavior persists in the, re like the, the full version retail driver, the public driver and if it exists on the uh, Red Devil. So I'm on the, the public driver now. This one is one that came out on the 13th. Uh, forget what number it is. I don't wanna mess with it right now while it's loading. Um, but yeah, so what I'm really looking for here is does the RAM do the same thing? We just did a search. We can't find anyone else talking about this. I've already asked if you guys have heard of it, let us know where, but initial searching, we can't find anyone talking about clock speeds dropping with GPU overclocking. Uh, for RAM, anyway, RAM, RAM speed. Ramstein dropping, sh dosh, RAM sh clock. <laughs> Let's go 2,900. Still drops. That explains why every time I overclocked, we lost performance. For instance, I was getting about a 10,000 score in uh, Time Spy Extreme. And I asked Phil, I said, what was your score in your test again? And he pulled it up and he was like 14,200 something. And I was like, what? How am I getting 4,000 difference? So I dropped the clocks a little bit and I got a 12,000. And I couldn't figure out what was happening. I was like, what is going on? And then we did some searching. We noticed that every single publication has a vastly different number in Times by Extreme. And I have a feeling we saw them range anywhere from 12,000 to 16,000. Like when you see a couple hundred points, maybe a thousand score difference, okay, fine. It could be some bottleneck, it could be a CPU thing, whatever. 4,000 points difference led me to, to believe that I think folks might've been applying a little bit of a manual overclock and not catching that the clock, dude, it was 909 megahertz for a second there. When I look back, look at, look at that. The RT accelerators are sucking up so much board power that the RAM is having to pay for it. I've never seen this behavior before. I think you guys have figured out by now. This is why I don't personally recommend manually overclocking your card. Personally, if you're gonna do anything manual and it pisses me off that we cannot select rage mode and have con our fan control because I would much rather have fan control and then select one of the auto overclocking like rage mode or whatever and be done with it. Or hit custom, power slide to the max, adjust your fan curve. You can see the clocks will go up already with the extra power limit. Don't touch your frequency. All right, we're gonna test the power color card and we'll get out of here, but so far, this doesn't appear to be something anyone else is talking about, and I do feel like this is something you need to be aware of, and I have no doubt. Actually, I think I've already gotten an email when I was on vacation by somebody emailing me saying they got a new 7000 series graphics card, and for some reason they're getting terrible FPS. I wonder. I have to actually reach out to that guy. So this is where the custom cards really start to shine, right? They're out of the box, 2821. Right, I mean, it's 300 megahertz higher than what we were getting with the, the standard card. And it's quiet to boot. And look at the temperatures, look at the junction temperatures. So again, you build an AMD card that's the size of a 4080, 4090, then obviously it's gonna be able to, you know, perform well. But we're getting those clock speeds because look at this, 375 watt is the power limit of that card out of the box. If I go ahead and max this slider, again, it's only 15%. With 15% of 375, should get us over 400, 427. It's 30, 3376, and we still haven't dropped any. It, it dropped, ah, oh, there we go. So we, just like I said, we hit core stability before we ever lost clock speed. That Red Devil card is performing exactly, actually, I think that was a full hard boot. Yeah, that was a full, that's a full or lock. That's fine. Okay, beware. If you have a reference 7900 XTX, just do like the auto overclock or rage or set the power limit and the fan curve how you want it. But the XTX uh, Red Devil performed exactly as expected now. Clock speeds didn't drop. I now need to get on the horn with AMD and be like, yo, bro, what the heck is happening here? Anyway, I hope this has um, kind of shed some light on things. I honestly think 
the, 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 I did get an email while I was on vacation telling me that, hey, I got a 700 XTX AMD card. I don't think they said a custom AIB that was getting terrible performance. And I'm wondering now if they manually overclocked it. I need to see if, uh, before we get out of here, I need to see if they can do Port Royal at that speed. You know, what's funny is I think in Port Royal, I'll get the RAM to come down uh, because I already experienced that. I experienced this behavior of the dropping FPS with the higher clocks on the Red Devil card first in Port Royal. Then I went to the standard card and started testing rasterization performance and it just does the same thing at a much higher frequency. I'm very pleased with the fact that the Red Devil card though can go well over 3000 megahertz without pulling anything from the RAM. That's just never been a thing I've had to check before, ever. So this is new, uncharted territory. It's weird because look, it's 400 watts. It's still 3146 megahertz. RAM is still fully up, but we're getting 20 something FPS. So performance has dropped, but the clocks are up where they should be. This is, that, that's some of the weirdness I experienced before. I just do rage mode. There we go, 2581 and all our FPS is back. <laughs> so right there, it's faster at 2500, FPS, uh, 2500 megahertz than it was at 3100. So something happens in the utility and I'm not sure what it is. Um, the behavior we're seeing here, and I'm gonna try and get some concrete answers from AMD as to why this is happening, appears to be the trade-off they have to make with a smaller cooler means they can't push the power limit as high as we can with this card, which means in order to keep the junction temperatures under control, they have to reduce the power limit. And I might say reduce, we're talking 400 watts here still on this card. Let's not forget the, 30, the 4080 is able to outperform this guy uh, easily by pushing up its power limits too, and it will barely hit 300 to 50, 315 watts. So for the first time, like NVIDIA is really the power efficient version compared to this guy. <laughs> so let's not forget this card is having to really push its limit. It's like, it's like the 4090 for AMD on being a, a very power hungry card. We're just used to the 4090 taking, you know, over 500 Watts. Whereas the 3080 is just under 300 or the 4080 is just under 300 Watts when not overclocked at all. So. It's taking a lot of wattage to push this guy up there. I just don't know the, the correlation behavior between clock speeds and FPS drop and all that. I'm not sure exactly what's happening there. So there is a lot of information in this video, but my recommendation, custom, max the power limit and be done. See, there we go. We got some clock speed out of it. Or click rage, restart the utility. There you go. Uh, I'll try and do a follow-up on what AMD actually has to say about this particular issue that we discovered and uh, we'll let you guys know. So if you're running this guy and probably even the 7900 XT also, which has a much lower power limit, if you're seeing weird performance, pull up the utility and check your RAM clocks. See if they're dropping on you. Not a good thing. All right guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.